I can clean one spot in here and feel good, but then I just get overwhelmed. Oh my, this, this is wrong. Do you not see the horns holding up his halo? I'm done, my time is over. This is getting ready to heat up. See, when I trust you and I go off what you say, you know don't interrupt me! You know what makes you a bad parent is brainwashing your daughter to hate her father. <laughs> I'm tired of listening to everybody talk bad about mom. I don't want you don't to you touch him! You go away! I can't do this anymore. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I'm Laura. If I had to pick a yes or no for whether or not I'm a hoarder, I would say no. I'm John, I'm Laura's boyfriend. Laura is definitely a hoarder. The house, it's a mess. Laura's got crap everywhere. I'm Angelina and Laura is my mom. In the house, there's Tupperware, there's paperwork, there's clothes. It's like a giant mess. I'm Jessie, and I'm Laura's stepdaughter. Like, there's clothes everywhere. The dining room, clothes, the kitchen, even more clothes. And you can barely walk through the hallway because there's so much random stuff. I can clean one spot in here and feel good. And then when I turn around and see the rest of it, it just motivates me to want to do more, but then I just get overwhelmed. I grew up in this house, and when I was little, it was perfect. Then when I was about four, my dad met Laura. She moved in, and then I just slowly started getting really bad. I'm Janet, and I'm Laura's sister. It's really hard to go there and be comfortable. I love my sister, but Laura cannot accept responsibility for the mess. The convoluted reasons that she gives about the hoarding are just delusion. I'm like a frustrated perfectionist. I can't clean until I can do it right or do it all in my time frame. I used to get upset on a daily basis about the house, and it always resulted in a screaming match, which wasn't doing anybody any good. I love him, I just don't like him very much. I'm pretty much living in the garage. I thought it was better, you know. I outfitted it with, you know, cable and TV, so it's kind of half man cave, half garage. And it's pretty much one place in the house that's a clean, semi-normal environment. Jessie put a lock on her door just to ensure that stuff stays out of it. I have my own room. Everything has its own little place. I keep it organized and clean and perfect. I feel embarrassed that I've allowed the hoarding to go on this long. Nobody, specifically my 14-year-old daughter, Angelina, should ever have to deal with this. At least I have my own bedroom and I have my own privacy. Well, kind of have my own privacy. On your, I'm always on your phone. I'm on Facebook. I don't like that Laura and Angelina have to share a room. Angelina should have her own room. But I like her in there. I like her sleeping in the bed because I like to know that she's there. I love my mom, I guess. 
I'm a mommy's girl. <laughs> Angelina is very influenced by Laura. I think she would actually like to have her own room, but when you grow up in that type of an environment, it's her normal. And that's what's sad. I've said to Laura that I will not live this way anymore. If it stays this way, we're done. I would be more than happy to give him the clean, perfect life he wants, but he doesn't compromise. I feel like he doesn't love me and wants to control me, but he's her dad, and I want to be able to look her in the eye and say, I tried everything I could humanly possibly do for us to be a family like you should have. Laura has been a hoarder since childhood. Growing up, Laura's room was a mess, always. And it did not improve after she moved out. Anybody could walk into any place that she's lived and see it's not good living conditions. About 16 years ago, there was a change of custody of my three older children when both fathers inspired with CPS to get custody away from me by using my home environment to their advantage. They had cause to take the kids out of the situation. I wish I had spoken with John before Laura moved in because I would have warned him, don't let her take over your house. But by the time I met him, you know, she was already pregnant with Angelina and she had already started moving her stuff in. kind of a weird, never-ending cycle of picking things up, bringing it home. Do we leave the stuffing in it? Yes. OK, we got it. Oh, I don't like to shop. I'm not a big shopper. I will go to get necessities. I go for particular things, organizing things, usually. It just makes no sense to me. I just think she thinks that she can use everything. She would take me to the store to like get stuff. She would always get like extra stuff. I don't trust her with money. For instance, last night we went to go get soap, laundry soap and stuff, and he gives the money to Angelina and then tells her to pay and bring him the change. Why? I don't know. It's just controlling. I do the things I do when it comes to money because in, invariably it ends up with more junk at the house. You don't want to go out and spend $50 to organize something and be happy that the counter's clean. Um, so therefore, I will just show you how unorganized it could be. Sometimes I think I do it to spite. A lot of times she was picking things up that people were giving away and bringing it home, and, and she'd hide it from me. Then when she forgets, that she moved something somewhere else, she'll accuse somebody of taking it. I don't work a job because I feel like I need to be here to protect my stuff, but it's mine. You know, it's a psychosis. There's no doubt about it. I just don't think there's anything wrong with me. I just feel like I'm just <laughs> off course. I just want to feel healed, you know, not perfect, not fixed. That's the last thing I want to feel is fixed. You know, it shouldn't be like <laughs> My head's going to explode.
Hello. Hi, I'm Dr. Green. I'm Laura. Come on in. I'm Dr. Melva Green, a psychiatrist specializing in hoarding behaviors. So, tell me what I'm looking at. I kind of covered the living room to keep people out. Drunk people. Well, what do you mean by the drunk people or keeping well, them out? John, or, whoever was here to drink with him. Neighbors, friends, or whoever. Just whoever. I mean, I have a young one, and I didn't want that in her living room. She feels the need to protect her daughter, but it's unclear as to whether John and his drinking friends are justifiable concerns. There certainly seems to be a bit of paranoia. And then I put this here because I got tired of people going through the stuff that's in there. So I just put stuff in front of it because then they can't get to it. And so who are you concerned is going through your stuff? John's daughter goes through Angelina's stuff and he goes through mine. The manner in which she's attempting to protect herself and her daughter by barricading them in is not healthy. She's got a lot of resentment, a lot of anger around John and what he's not doing. See, things like the steak was here when I got up in the morning and the sink is full again. I just think any adult can just wash their own stuff and put it away. Could have taken 10 seconds to throw it in the trash and wash the dish, right? It's important that we also get John's perspective because at this point, it's all been Laura's version of what's going on. John, come up. This is Dr. Green. Hi. Hi, how are you? Nice, nice to meet you, Dr. Meet you. Green. How do you think she's faring in this space? I think she's just been used to it, which is sad and unfair. She needs a room all her own. Does she share this room with somebody? Just me now. This is a teenage girl's space that has been bombarded by her mother. It oh, certainly just... made me take pause that this young girl is living like this. So the bottom line is we need to get this cleaned up. This whole house is filled like this thing that is four feet in front of your face. That's a love seat. There's, people are supposed to sit on that. But that's not just there today, that's there every day. I'm done placating you just by buying something, then there's nowhere to put it to free it in because there's too much in the way of putting it there. It's not gonna work. You're still thinking I should clean this room and then I should run out and clean the kitchen and then I should do the laundry. Face, you're not looking at this whole house. You Sam can't control see. everything about me. This is my life, that's your life, and we have one together and you choose to try to control it all. I trust you and I go you off what you, you say. Why? Don't interrupt me! John seems to have a good grasp. He was able to really offer some big picture perspectives that seemed very reasonable. From Laura's perspective, everything is John's fault. She's gained 100 pounds since they've been together. That's John's fault. Her house is hoarded. That's John's fault. The dishes aren't done. The laundry isn't washed. The daughter's room is upside down. It's all John's fault. I don't have to listen to you. You're not my dad. I know, and you do the exact opposite. That's because why I, you piss that's me why. off, and you're not my dad. So you agree. You can't tell me what so you to do. Admit. Time. This you all can do very well, the arguing. If you're not careful, you're going to really mess up your daughter. And that's just as straight as I can make it. Yeah. This is not a game. You're going to really mess up that beautiful girl. I know. If he doesn't change the behaviors that got us here dealing with me, we're not going to get anywhere. Laura. He doesn't think that they're, that they're. Laura, John is not your problem. Why? Laura, Laura. This house is hoarded. I don't think that she recognizes that she's got disordered thinking. She recognizes that she's got a dysfunctional relationship with her partner, but she does not seem to really be able to connect the dots with her own emotional disturbances. And then you Laura, don't want to help Laura, anything that I have to say. Laura, Laura, we're going to wrap it up here. You're scared. 
You are deeply afraid. I get it. But there's no more stalling. We're here. We're gonna do this. I don't think Laura knows what's getting ready to hit her. If she's not able to assume some level of responsibility and take accountability in this cleanup, it's not gonna go very well at all. I'm Karen, and I'm friends with Laura and Janet. Ick. Ew. Oh, yeah. I hate God. spiders. Laura moved here 15 years ago, and I've never been here. When I first walked in, I was in complete shock. Yeah, it's been a little while since I've been here. I didn't know what to expect. I knew it was going to be bad, but I mean, it just freaked me out. Every nook and cranny is covered. The kitchen's over here. Oh my. The kitchen made my skin crawl. Which I haven't been in this room for a while. Good God. Laura sleeps in here with Angelina. They sleep here together? Mm -hmm. Really? Seeing her Angelina has to live as a 14-year-old girl. She can't do her homework. She doesn't have a desk. She has a little tiny bed. I felt bad. I don't think anybody should live like that. I, I, I wanted to cry. Wow. I need my junk team. Junkers, I need you over here. <laughs> this is it. I'm Dorothy Brenninger, and I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. We are up against a house full on the inside and outside. And then there's two individuals who are at odds. But the most important thing here is a 14-year-old girl. We're here for a reason. Angelina, at 14, you deserve at this age now to have your own space, yours and yours alone. So that's our mission, to help you get that space. And I want to get started. And we're going to start bringing it out. All right, we can box it. We want to get Angelina and Laura in Angelina's room so that we can start exploring some of the true dynamics that are happening. If Dr. Green and I weren't here right now and the two of you needed to clear this room, how would you start? What would you do? Throw everything out the window. So then, and then we just would bring have... in what we needed. Yeah, bring in Or put spot. it away before we set yeah. anything down. Is this 100% all your stuff in here? Uh, I'd say 97 to 98% of it is yeah. probably hers. Just want to make sure that you speak, Angeline. OK. You know, Dorothy asked you the question, and your mom answered it. It appears that what Angelina thinks is what she's told to think. It's time for her to find her own voice. The idea with this was, I just wanted to make a base for it and then put it in front of the window so she had a place to sit. So um, I know what you want. Excuse but, me. Sorry. Yeah, so Excuse no. Me. What the heck do you want? Dorothy told me that I need to have my own opinion and I need to speak up. Angelina is learning that this is not okay. And we're also coaching her to start speaking up. I felt very ganged up on and I felt like it was not being heard. I think the dressing would be more useful for her. So Angelina is expressing to 
Laura for the first time. Her own thoughts, her own feelings. It's kind of falling apart, and my clothes always get stuck on it. No, thank you. Okay. You can take it. All right. You can go bye-bye. <laughs> it is very, like, relieving to, like, have, like, my own space and, like, be able to go to my bed. My mom is not sleeping in my room unless I invite her to. Yeah, be really careful setting I want this in her room. I don't want it in her room. <laughs> okay. There's a genuine excitement as Angelina's room is beginning to clear. So much energy right now. <laughs> I do have a lot of energy. I know. But we haven't gotten into the hurts, the resentments, the anger that all of them are holding. This is getting ready to heat up. It's going to be a lot harder than I think they recognize. Laura, there's something that I'm really waiting for because it's an indication to me as to whether someone is really going to be able to change. And that is a level of accountability. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of stuff that's yours, right? Well, no, not necessarily. Not the all of the stuff that nobody else puts away. When things look like this to begin with, people have no respect for cleaning up But if... listen, you come in here, dump your dishes in the sink. Nobody sure. can rinse their plate and put it in here to dry or put sure, it in the dishwasher. Sure that happens. I'm, I, it I, happens sure. every time. Every time. The dishes it, from nothing. I don't even know what month. They're right here, John. Five plates here and only three of us usually eat here. You're missing You're my point. You're missing my point. Do you even remember what I said? Yes, and I what know I that say? a lot of it is bull it could be anybody. But nobody, Any... not one person who bitches and complains about the kitchen being a mess cleans it ever, ever. And the only time you ever clean it is when you get mad and you start coming in here and slamming dishes. Yeah, that's not that's true. That's the only time. It is true. No, it isn't true. It is true. You know what? You can Why yell as loud as you want. It doesn't make it true. For that he doesn't do. Just insist on yelling louder than the other person, and that makes you right. And guess what? It doesn't. You can't work with Laura. You try to talk about something and should blame other people or other things, and you just never get anywhere. So I knew I just had to walk out. I wrote on here, clean this. On the glass, I said clean it. Never once did anybody clean it. Laura, take a I'm deep just... breath. You don't know the history between John and I and how things accumulate in certain places. The point is not that. It is that! No, actually the very bottom line of everything is that this is John's house. So but why doesn't he have to respect me and my things? Just no. because he owns this piece of property in this house okay. doesn't make me insignificant, doesn't make my boundaries I never said that, number okay, one. Well, stop saying that because- Can you shut the f up for a minute? Question. You let me talk. But this is your <laughs> that you have brought in here over a decade, and Angelina does not deserve to live like okay, this. That's what we're doing today. The whole right? reason that we're doing this is for a chance for you to take responsibility for your. Nobody <laughs> makes him take responsibility for him. I'm not the only one who needs to do different behavior. Why is that not being addressed? Because this mess right here is the biggest part of the problem that needs to what get What is the first. problem? Anybody that I know that has a perfectly clean house I don't think their children are half as happy as mine. You are so in denial, it's not even funny. Look at her. Look at your daughter right now. Both of you stop yelling at each other. Right now, we're just trying to help everybody, this entire family. I'm here for my sister, Angelina. I pretty much would do anything for her. I don't want her to have to go through the things that I've had to go through.
no one has ever questioned how much you love your kids. There's a deep level of denial. I think you're experiencing this as an attack. It's not an attack on you. It is, how should we say, a very excited effort to get you to see some things that you have not been able okay, to well, see. Okay, well, I'm still not to seeing feel, them then. To feel some things that you have not been able to feel. And I know that this is not what you want to model for your children. I know it's not but it's gonna start with you being able to hear, tolerate hearing some things that are difficult to hear. Okay, well, I don't there feel has to be a I, recognition I that you have a hoarding problem. Otherwise, nothing changes. There's been a lot of screaming and yelling, doing things out of spite, doing things because they're resentful, but there hasn't been this direct open communication. So it's important that we continue this new behavior. So that's the only way they're going to be able to move forward. So the conversation that we had yesterday now that you understand what hoarding behavior is, do you think that this is a problem for you? Um, I don't feel like a hoarder because I didn't do it to have the stuff, but I did it to keep people out. And if that's what hoarding behavior is, then that's what I was doing. And I don't feel like I want to do that anymore. Justin, I want it to right here. We're gonna hit the carport, hit that back side of the house, bring it all forward, and have her start going through it. All of this stuff, just start pulling it down. You're just gonna lay it all out so she can see it. They're all plastic, I think. Yeah, I think it's just stuff that... Just was... yes or no, babe, if it's easy. Uh, that can go. To me, this is automatic trash. What it looks like on top is probably what it's gonna look like all the way to the bottom. So the question is, do you really want to go through and look at it, or can you make the assumption that the whole thing is contaminated and deteriorated? I don't know. Laura needs to make all the decisions herself, but it's not exactly the most efficient use of anybody's time. So we need to get a family meeting together. We need to ask Laura to delegate. So Laura, you've been doing a really great job letting all this trash go. That's great. But we're going to run out of time. It's important that you start trusting and delegating to your family. Because the bottom line is, if you don't, you're still going to have just mountains and mountains of stuff. I don't know. To get it done, we need to split up and, and use the manpower. OK, but I can't do that right now. Are you after a clean home? OK. If that's what you're after, then you are going to have to delegate. Can, can maybe he just be in charge of the kitchen stuff? Laura's having a very difficult time delegating, but this is classic hoarding behavior. Right, right now, we yeah. can do the kitchen. OK, kitchen. OK, all right but she was able to do it. She was able to give each individual a task. So, living room, dining room, kitchen, your room, and you two are gonna do tent. Just throw it out, yeah. Everybody is working on their assignments and we're motoring through it. I wanted to go in the kitchen for you to be able to see what he's done. Okay. I'm done. I'm tired of him. You know, this was supposed to be all about me so that I can feel safe with the stuff that I've saved that I wanted to have. 
The only things that have been released are the things that were trashed. No, that's not true. Do you want to see what I did in here, by no, the way? No, I don't want to see what you did in here. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with you anymore. Isn't this what you want? Did, did, are you telling I me don't. that you wanted it no, to be the way it was? I wanted to take all of my mugs and my cups all of your to mugs. my cupboard. I kept out some ones I thought you would use on a daily basis. That This box and that box in there are all the rest of them for you to go through and decide which ones you want to keep, OK? I want you to not touch my things, not think about me having them and you using them. I want to pick an example. Okay, you've got Those don't go in the dishwasher! That's what I mean. That's why I, I don't mean, want you to touch it. them! They're not fine crystal. They are, but they're fine glasses that I like, and I don't want to get... Okay, I don't want to store things that we've... But they're not yours! ...for years. Just leave me alone! No, you don't Stop. care about Stop. anybody but yourself. Let me have the space for things that we use on a no on a daily basis. Take all my out. You don't need right. any of my right. in here. You, know, you could have done that 10, 15 years yeah, ago. But you chose to force me to not be able to put away everyday items in the kitchen that really? need to be used. Because when I empty this, then what would you put in there? What everyday item would you actually put in there? Well, if you had, if you had walked up here, question. if you walked up here, I tried to organize the things that we use. Here's a sugar container. Here's flour. Here's some nice cups no, I thought you might use. Here's a tall. These are Stop my touching mugs. me. All right. These Stop are yours. touching me. Excuse me. Those are yours. All your nice mugs, your Chicago socks, all of your glasses, all of those things are yours on this shelf. In that corner. Did you? Those are your so, mugs. So if I had put, so if I put those touch? mugs there, you would have been happy. We wouldn't be having this conversation. These are my this mugs. Is the this is the crap that you do these to are stop my mugs. dealing with what I'm asking you to understand. Okay? These are my What I'm asking mugs. you to understand is nobody them. does this. Nobody takes a plastic glass and let me it's say my, what set. I'm saying. Yes, it is. Then why do you have to do it? It's mine. I buy you your own Okay, cup. well, okay, then. Is this what you want me to say? It's a well, whole I have set. no responsibility to store the tons of things that you don't want anybody to touch that are not fine china, no. fine crystal. You say they're I don't just want because they're to yours, you don't want anybody to touch them. They're right. plastic cups. So what? They're taking up valuable space. Valuable space for what? We haven't even brought the kitchen back in yet. Nothing came out of the cupboard. The cupboard was fine. Right. John, we had a conversation earlier about the avoidance. You all cannot avoid this. You cannot run. You cannot. John is trying. He really is trying to communicate. He's trying to also establish his own boundaries. However, she wants to control the process. She doesn't want anyone going through her things, touching her things. Hear yourself. Oh my god. Well, we're fighting about plastic cups. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I I've just got to stay firm. I can't do this anymore. If it was my own cupboard in my own kitchen, there'd be no problem with my mugs sitting in there. You are the problem. No, you. Yes. You, your problem you is, is you took. You don't need to use my cups. You took the fact. You took you the fact. To you took the fact that. You, it wouldn't have made a difference if I had taken those cups out of here and put them over there. Um, you would have found something okay, else. It doesn't up. matter if it's shut in that up. cupboard or that cupboard. Yes, it does. I tried to do something nice, yes, but does. you don't want it to be nice. That's your problem. No. All right. You so do it your way. That's always what it's about. Okay. My, These what are you're calling my fine. way. You don't even know how long they've been there. My, my way is I'm not hoarding. Shit. I'm sorry. I'm not a hoarder. I want it to be a functioning house, no, I don't want to not. Be functioning. Not you. I'm done. It's your house. You're gonna do it. No, when they leave, I am gonna you're do gonna it. be well, you anyway. Because you know what? I, I be functioning. I'm oh, not going to whatever. do this anymore. Whatever. Okay. I want everybody to take a deep breath. You're not gonna fix this. This is not gonna be better. No, this is not about fixing it. What I want is for everyone to be clear. What I'm hearing is some line drawn in the sand. What's the bottom line? Bottom line for me is I, I'm not I'm not playing this game anymore. Laura, yeah. what did you hear him say? It's all about him. It's always about him. 
What did you hear him say? I don't listen to him anymore. I gotta get back to work. I'm not gonna let this opportunity slip through my fingers. I'm sitting here and arguing. I can't do this anymore. I'm tired of getting rid of stuff that means something to me just because I live in his house. Well, I'm so done. The more I throw away, and the more people throw away for me, and the clearer it gets, this is not my home. I don't know about her, but it's not my home anymore. You're not trapped. You're at a crossroad. Boxing it up and having it ready to go makes me feel empowered. Okay. Boxing it all up, taking it to your little, say, apartment or something while you guys work on this relationship. This is not good for Angelina. It's not good. I'm yeah. sorry, excuse me for one second. It's okay. I need you. Ah, okay. I'll be right back. All righty. So, Laura said she wanted to go. Holy cow, are you serious? I'm leaving John. He'll have his house back. He'll have his bedroom, he'll have his garage, he'll have his kitchen, he'll have his office. The plan that she's come up with at this point is that she will pack all of her things up and it going out, whether it goes into storage or whether it goes into her own apartment. Now, he doesn't know. Okay. So we need to have a conversation with him okay. before we have the conversation with the family and the team. I think that's only right that he know first. There's been a turn of events, and Laura has now decided that she is going to take her things and go. I tried to help her to process what it was that she was saying, and she does indeed want to have her things packed up to transition outside of here. Now, I want to be clear. I have no problem paying to have her stuff stored somewhere else. So this is it. Okay. 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 Makes me very sad. I know. I'm I mean, sad. things are gonna get crazy with my daughter. Yeah. You know, but it's not fair to go any farther. Not like this. Laura's left to think about her choices, think about the decisions that she's made today, and this is gonna be difficult for her. Laura's got to follow through. Yesterday, Laura said, I want to have everything boxed up. I want to have it put in storage. This is the last day, and it is important that all of us are on the same page. I didn't know my stuff was being moved out today. I didn't know anything about the trucks coming to pack my stuff. You put that in motion. You demanded it. This is a plan you came up right. with. And now today, you don't remember these statements. That's concerning to me. In these situations, when someone has been so avoidant and has made a plan and set some things in motion, now all these other issues rise. You're making me doubt myself. No, no, nope. I'm not making you do anything, Laura. This is what is Laura choosing. Not Dr. Green, not Janet, not John. What is Laura choosing? I'm not, I'm not choosing to move out of here without my daughter. So if my daughter's not coming with me, then I guess I'm staying. Well, I think that's a conversation you need to have with John. I always intended on getting custody of Angelina. Um, I, I don't think that being around her mom is gonna be helpful. That's sure, not that, up to him. 
that it is up to him. She's his daughter too. You have always called her your daughter. Are you kidding? You didn't make her by oh. yourself. I don't like him. That doesn't make you me a what? bad parent. That you know what makes you a bad person. parent is brainwashing your daughter to hate her father. That's not my fault. She doesn't like him. She's smart enough to make her own decisions. No, she's not. Okay, I watched whatever. you yesterday whatever. holding her hand while we were having our conversation over here, being making her your confidant. So you have one ally, one ally. You have brainwashed her to be your ally. And that's wrong. Don't start with that. Bull this is the time. It's unclear as to whether or not Janet's words are going to change anything as it relates to Laura's circumstances. She's still not interested in hearing a lot of input from her sister or from anyone else for that matter. It needs to be brought up in therapy and I swear to God I hope you take advantage of therapy because you need it. Don't sit there and tell me I need therapy. Oh yeah, you do. Actually, what I'm referring to when I said, John, this is a conversation that needs to be had with John, it is about whether you're staying here. Because things have been put into motion, Laura. You put things in motion yesterday. OK, can I have this conversation and make these decisions without her? Sure. I am out of here. I'm, I'm not team John. I'm team process, right? Do you not see the horns holding up his halo? Because they're there. I'm tired of being berated by you. I've put up with it for 15 years. This is the 11th hour. We've got to be clear. OK, I'll be very clear. Here's where I stand. I am not putting up with the hoarding. This shit has to go. I'm done. My time is over. Doing oh, it. Okay. Uh, we're not doing it. All right, okay, yeah. we're done. We're done. Yeah, we are done. Go. Not doing it. All of Laura's things are being boxed up. John has agreed to provide storage, but ultimately she has to decide if she's going to continue to live in the home. I'm tired of listening to everybody talk bad about mom. <laughs> I know that's really hard, and you know what? It's very hard <laughs> for all of us because we do care about mom, but she needs to get better, you know? I understand that, but yeah. I just don't understand why you guys have to talk bad to her. Come here, give me a hug. <laughs> I understand. I want to apologize to you. You know, I let you down. Thank you so much. I get to spend time with you. You know, that's kind of one of the problems that mom needs to work out. You know, you just don't know how much she's kept us apart. You know? You and I don't get to have a you know, regular father-daughter relationship. Laura has a tremendous amount of influence on Angelina. And John has identified the bond as something that has been an impediment for him developing a relationship with her and something that he's saying that he's ready to do something about, that he's looking forward to building a relationship, a deeper bond with Angelina. I just felt that he understood how I was feeling this entire time a little bit better, and it made me feel better that he understood.
So it's coming together, huh? Yeah, sure is. Yeah. Crazy. Bittersweet. What do you yeah. mean? Because I have to be firm about how things go from here with Laura. You know, I gotta follow through, stick to my word. You know. Walking in and seeing everything clean just underscores, you know, the pain I feel for everything I've I've learned. Didn't have to say to Laura. Hey. Hello. Hey. John wanted to share something with you about the sort of the expectations moving forward so that you're able to be very clear about your next moves, okay? The, the process, to, you know, took me to a new place I've never been before. The house is clean, but there's, there's more to it than that. I think that we, we are just too volatile together at this point, and I just can't see anything changing. And unfortunately, that means for the sake of myself, the kids, and yourself included, um, one, I agreed to pay for the um, storage for two months. And um, the other thing is um, you need to find a, another place to live within a month. I don't know what else to say. You know. This has been a big, big, big step for John. Coming to the realization of what he needs in terms of his own boundaries and his own sense of self-respect. Sometimes the hardest decisions are the best decisions, yeah. okay? And it may feel like it, but this is not a failure. If you are able to give yourselves what you need, you can give Angelina what she needs. I agree. Oh my God, it's pink. Angelina having her own room is vital for her in terms of learning her own boundaries. This is your space. You do not have to share it. You have every right to be selfish with your space. You know, if John and I never come back together, she'll have a place here, she'll have a place with me, and that will be up to her. Angelina having her own, own room is the best result of all this. John's gonna do what he's gonna do, and I gotta do what I gotta do. He gave me 30 days to find another place. You know, I love him and I care about him, but as much as he can't do this anymore, I can't either.